Hey, hey guys, back with Awakening with Ali. And I'm your host, Ali, and I'm so honored to be here today. I have such an incredible soul, light worker, energy practitioner. I mean, he's done so much. He has such an incredible story. I'm so honored to have him here. I have Hillis Pugh here, and Hillis is an author, teacher, speaker, and holistic practitioner, utilizing the gifts and tools to empower others on their journey. The reason why he chooses to do this work is to guide others on their path to let them know they are not alone. Hillis mentors each soul on their path to lift them up so they can see what he sees beyond the physical realm. Hillis Pugh is an energy facilitator working with modalities such as psychic mediumship, Reiki, and Lumerian light energy to co-create a deeper connection to the soul. We work together on a universal sync of exploration of your inner space to be expressed outwardly. Hillis, I'm so honored to have you. Thank you so much, Ali. It's so pleasure, such a pleasure to be here with you and to be with your audience today. Yes, so, so much so. And I love, I just love your bio, to be honest. It's so, you just feel that, that beautiful energy and that, and that magic of like, you know, I'm here to support you. I'm here for you to show up for yourself, to empower you, for to have that beautiful energy. And it's so needed right now. So, so thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. I mean, I, I, I hope you guys feel the energy. I wrote it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I felt it immediately. I was reading it and I was like, oh, wow, this is beautiful energy. I just love it. So for those that maybe, you know, don't know you or don't know your story, would you share maybe just a little bit more about you and kind of how you got to where you are now? Because, you know, you're doing so many incredible things and really with the energy, especially is so incredible, but I'm sure you didn't start there. So I would love to kind of hear, you know, a little bit about your story. And then I have so many questions for you. Beautiful. And, you know, like anyone, you know, who has started this work, we all have small, humble beginnings. And for me personally, my first love, no matter what anyone else tells you, my first love will always be poetry, you know, because I've I've loved poetry since the time I was a a kid, since I was a teenager and was writing it myself. And then from there, you know, I, you know, fast forward to 2008 is where I really learned the energy of gratitude and really understood what gratitude really meant because, you know, after me uh, losing everything, after me losing my job, you know, after, you know, me losing my business relationship, everything just falling apart. From there, it just really fast forward to, you know, understanding what it means to have appreciation in everyday life. And from that, I really understood what gratitude really meant by, by expressing appreciation to my friends and family who supported me through that. And then it just simply just evolved one step after another because after gratitude and appreciation, I really started to express it in writing a weekly blog, into books, into teaching about gratitude and law of vibration and helping people understand the symbiotic relationship between the two because one can exist without, without the other. And then from there, it evolved into me uh, honing my psychic abilities by going to school to understand which one am I, what psychic abilities do I have. And so after going to school and really understanding that and really moving into that space, I then, you know, began to explore, you know, what it means to be a Reiki practitioner, what it means to really uh, channel such uh, wonderful energies to help and assist other people, to guide them, to help them really understand who they are. And then from there, I've, I've met my new teacher who I'm working with now to understand the, the depth of the Lemoyne light energy that I channel through Syrian uh, energies. And so it is in that where I'm in my most joy, my most happy, because to see the transformation from the time a client starts with me to the time they finish is just heartwarming. It's just so incredible. It's, it's brings me so much joy. I love that because it's so heart-led, you know, and I really believe the space we're moving into and, you know, this new now earth is heart-led businesses. It's heart-led service. It's it's really what it should have been all along and showing others that you can do that and be 
abundant in that because you are transforming others and you are empowering them and you're further bringing them up with you as you further, you know, come, come up in the world and learn and evolve. So I think that's just beautiful. And you could feel again, you know, your energy as you were sharing, you know, your story and how the transformations and, you know, I can relate a little bit in the transformational space because with styling, you know, for years, I always said, I love watching people's transformations from the inside out. You know, people would think it's all about the clothing and the materials. And yeah, of course, clothing's, you know, fabulous, but when I would watch them actually step into their confidence and transform and see authentically who they were and always were, but really didn't know, it was so powerful for me to stand there and be like, wow, you booked, you know, a new role, you know, you met the love of your life, you know, something changed dramatically in their life. And they didn't even realize that transformation came from within them. So I love that. That's so powerful. Um, so, you know, with what you're doing now and everything with, you know, energy, and I know you have this amazing live event coming up. Can you share a little bit about kind of um, how you work, you know, with energy, what that kind of means for those that maybe are still learning um, this type of space and, and give us a little bit more of the, you know, the goodness of, of what Hillis does. Awesome. So thank you, Allie. So what the goodness that I bring, well, I mean, it's honestly, I'm, I'm coming to find out it is limitless. It is uh, in the space in which I work as allowing me the mission granted to me, actually, from the higher councils, mother of herself, the energies on the planet, the sounds, the frequencies, the light, everything is energy. You know, know everything from the breath that we breathe to the sun and the sky and the ground beneath our feet. It's everything that I have access to when I perform and work with my clients using light language and using sound and using these various frequencies to bring forth and facilitate this energy that my uh, client soul is asking for. Because it's not I who's asking for this, it's just me uh, surrendering to the client's needs. It's me being just this vessel by, okay, well, my, if my client needs more of this, okay, let me call in this energy. And where can I get this energy from? Can I get it from the sun? Can I get it from planet Sirius? Can I get it from the earth? Okay, we need more clearing energy. Okay, let's bring in some of that earth and wind energy. So it's like, you know, just me really connecting to whatever element that is being asked for in that time. And it is just really understanding and that true connection. That's what it's about. It's about that true connection. And that true connection stems from the level of trust. And the trust starts from the moment a client contacts me. From the moment they, I get a phone call, email, text, however they contact me. It's from that very first moment. And it builds in us creating that relationship, a harmonious relationship through a consultative process. And in that, from the very first session to the last session and beyond, because I just, just because, you know, we've done the work doesn't mean that I'm not going to stop communicating with you. You could be my best friend after all of this, you know? <laughs> oh, I love that. And I love that you've said too, so beautifully that you surrender to, yeah. you know, your clients' um, needs and really, you know, are there to support them and embody what they need, right? Because that's such an example of service and, you know, being with them instead of, you know, saying, you know, what you need or what needs to be done. You're really essentially holding space for them and letting them come into that container to be able to then step into what they need. And then you're able to facilitate, okay, this is where we get this from. And, and that's, that's so powerful. Yeah, and I think the, the best leader, the best person that is that does this is one who does it because we've been charged and sometimes we even self-impose or self-charge ourselves to be this person but what does that really mean i mean hey i'm, I'm volunteering i'm putting up my hand and i'm like i'm volunteering for this i'm like what am i volunteering for i mean i'm putting myself in charge i don't think so i mean it, it's almost like you you're you know, self-appointing yourself, but self-appointing yourself to what? I mean, we never really, in, in my my space, is I never desire to exert power over anyone. It's my desire to 
stand there with that person and to hold their hand and, and if need be, stand behind them and hold them up while they're going through their process. I mean, because I've been doing this for over 10 years, so I understand the path, the journey, the the ups and downs and the pitfalls and it's like I've had enough and I'm just done. I'm like, wait a minute, okay, but I get back on the horse. <laughs> you know, you 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 have these moments because we're only human having these various experiences. And it's, 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 it's these experiences that allow us to really begin to embody and understand the limitless ability that we truly come into this world to experience. Wow. So well said. And I love that you said that about limitless because you're right. It's we're all starting to learn that we've always had that, you know, limitless and that, that unlimited way of being able to access that power and that nothing really, you know, is in our way except really ourselves. But of course, we've been programmed to believe that there are limits and that there are, you know, um, barriers, if you will, and everything. And, you know, I'm curious, Hillis, in your journey, because you've been doing this, like you said, for over 10 years and obviously very deep into your work and service. But I'm curious, obviously, my show is called Awakening with Ali. And when you first stepped into, you know, this space and your spiritual path, what was your awakening like? You know, what was, you know, what would you share for those that are listening? Because I have a lot of people who are kind of just starting to awaken, are very early into their path. And, you know, which is why I felt really called, you know, God, source, everything was like, you need to do a show all about your own journey because it's, I've had such a, a crazy awakening and not, and, and allow yourself not to just share your own, but then allow others to share theirs to help further be of service to humanity, to understand that this is a part of our evolution. And, and this is what really we're here for. And so I would love for you to share before you got into such this incredible work and everything you're doing now, what did Hellas's awakening look like? You know, what, what was the path? What, what brought it? I'm so curious. You know, that's a really good question, and I'm happy that you've asked that, you know, my awakening. I feel it was a gradual process with moments of ahas, if you will. And the very first aha, you know, as I mentioned in my story, was in 2008, when I first realized the power of gratitude, the power of appreciation, and really understanding the flow of that energy. And with that, there were just markers along the way that just highlighted even more uh, awareness to let me know it's like I am actually now stepping into the energy of remembering who I really am, remembering my soul and remembering how old I am in in, in uh, soul years and remembering the essence of my being and it's just you know all these these spots along the way and I know I'm not done. I'm nowhere near finished. I'm no I mean at nowhere near complete in in my journey or path. This is just you know the one of the major life markers of me really stepping in and really understanding to really fulfill my role, my purpose here. Yeah, that's amazing. And I love that you said it was kind of like different aha moments because it's interesting, you know, for some, I feel like it's like different little things. And then some others I talk to, it's like a major catalyst and then more that kind of trickles and plays out. And, you know, it, it's funny when I think back to mine, I'm like, I think I did have aha moments, but I probably like ignored them and pushed them to the side and then had my huge catalyst. So then made me go, yeah. oh, those other little things were trying to show me, um, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, I always joke with my, you know, with some of my friends, I'm like, it's almost like to me, you know, in the, you know, the spiritual realm, it's like, Hey, they kind of give you these little, like nice little taps and nudges. And then, you know, after that, you kind of start getting kicked around and you're still not paying attention. It's like this, uh, metaphorical two by four to the head, you know, <laughs> <You're right there. laughs> yep, 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 yep. Exactly. you know, and so I love that you said for you, you know, you started having these aha moments, you really started realizing how much being in gratitude and, you know, in appreciation and, you know, in your own, you know, loving, heart space, what that did for you and that, you know, transformation from what it sounds like. I'm curious for you, as you tapped more and more into that and you realize that that, that frequency, that energy, you know, that vibration was always there for you. And it became, I'm sure, you know, in, in, engulfed in you as you furthered and furthered into that. As you went through that, did you start to then notice more and more of your gifts come online or was it more of just kind of understanding and, and continuing in that gratitude practice that then led you to you wanting to explore further? Like, how did that transition play? 
No, that that I like that question. I mean, because I'm sitting here because I have to actually pause to remember how that actually happened. You know, because for me, gratitude, appreciation will always be the foundation. It's just the different ways on how I look at it. But as I sit here and I think about the process, you know, I've always had psychic mediumship abilities. I've always had that, you know, even as a kid. But it wasn't home. It wasn't practice. And so, you know, like most psychic, you know, we have to be taught a certain way. We have to find, you know, which um, Claire, as they call it, is suits me, like which one is mine. As I went to school, I understood that the strongest Claire for me was Claire audience. So which means I can hear spirit, I can hear sound, I can hear frequency. And then my clairvoyance and then my clairsentience kicks in. And then from there, I said, well, I know there's something more I can do. There's something more I can do. What else can I do? So then that's why I began to explore, you know, Reiki. You know, and so from there, after I had my Reiki teacher, I'm like, this is cool. This is nice, but there's got to be something else. There's got to be something, you know, that's more aligned with, you know, my my energy. So that's how I found the teacher that I have now that is uh, the Lemoyne Light Energy and went through six months of clearing out my junk, my stuff, before I can really be fully attuned to handle this energy. And this energy is unlike any other on the planet right now. I mean, it's one of the most potent energies because like I mentioned, I, I utilize every single facet of energy on the planet, even and even the ones that people de deem toxic, such as, such as microwave energy or or uh, 5G energy. I can take those energies, transmute them and use them in my practice. I mean, it's, I mean, energy is energy. It's just how we label it to really understand if we can use it or if it's going to hurt or harm us in any way. I mean, it's just our belief. And, you know, if you can change your belief, you can change anything. Wow. I love that you said that because it's so true. It's like energy is everything. You can transmute it, but it's how you, how you see it, how you perceive it, how you allow it to be received and, and come on to you. And that's, that's such a beautiful point. And thank you for sharing that with your, you know, your story and kind of how you further went through, because I do feel like so many in the collective right now are in that space of like, you know, something's different about me. They're starting to kind of realize like, you know, maybe who they are or something else is coming online. They didn't realize it's who they are yet, but they know that the, with who they are in this moment isn't working and it's no longer, you know, like I've had so many people reach out to me that are like, you know, I've been corporate for 20 years and all of a sudden I, you know, I don't like my job or, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, to, you know, 40 years and all of a sudden it doesn't resonate anymore. And I'm like, I'm raising my hand. I get it. You know, it's, it's a hard shift, you know, all of a sudden you're like, what's happening, you know? And so I love that, you know, for you, you're like, Hey, I kind of, as I, you know, further came into that space, I tried different things, different modalities to really test out what I was feeling. And what I love about what you shared, Hillis, is that you really not only followed your heart, but your intuition of like, oh no, there's more. I have more gifts. There's more to me. There's more, you know, in alignment of what I'm feeling, even though these things are great, they're not what I think that I know I'm already part of, you know, and that you continued that, that search really in faith to allow that to show up for you, to align to what you're doing now with energy, which is incredible. So that's a really good way for us to kind of transition into this event that you're doing and to kind of further go into, um, you know, what that means and, and light energy and all that. We'd love for you to share it. So thank you so much for that. You know, that warms my heart to hear what you said to reflect that back to me. So thank you for that. Um, but the event I'm super, super, super duper excited about so a few months ago, I did a uh, light body activation, which is for me to bring forth, you know, galactic energies, universal energies to assist in the unlocking and opening of the uh, latent DNA. So the event that I'm hosting on the Ascended Masters, uh, Thursday, March 17th at 6 p.m. Eastern, um, is light body activation 2.0. But what is light body activation 2.0? Guys, I really don't know yet. But what I will tell you is this, is that the energies that have opened up since the 222 portal have been immense. And so this allows me to access different energy. 
different galactic energies that are beyond the scope of what we normally have access to. And so in that way, you can expect is a deepening, uh, more of ascended energy for you to open up all 12 strand DNAs in a, in a process. It's not all going to happen at one time, but this is the key, if you will, unlock and open the latent DNA energies, the open up and activate the dormant cells to open and even begin restoration process of aspects of the light body energy. So what is light body? For those who don't know what light body is, so just imagine, you know, your body is carbon based, which is from the earth. Because you know, if you now our body is is carbon earth energy, and now since the earth has transmuted her body to fourth dimensional energy, so we must follow her because we come from her. So she is already in that phase of crystalline energy. And so what this would do is to help activate the crystalline energy body matrix, turn it into the liquid crystal beings that we are. And the crystal being, the crystal light is a much lighter energy, but it's uh, more dense. And when I say dense, it's a hardened energy. It's uh, less prone to illness or disease or, or harming the body on any level. So this will help to, to bring the energy in and to help allow for the trueness of your essence, the trueness of your soul to be expressed in this form and to even have your abilities to come online whether if you're a psychic or an energy healer, your telepathy, your telekinesis, all of this will happen. I mean, not all at the time of the activation, obviously, but this is this will be a gradual process of time. But this is the, the key to do that. Wow, so cool. So basically, from what I'm understanding, you're essentially going to help others tap into their light that is already essentially within them and their vessel in what's going on right now has been playing out with the portal. And then as that activation happens and you lead this through this, then afterwards, essentially, as you're activating and you're um, downloading, as you go through that, then your gifts will start to really show themselves and come online and in all different forms um, that maybe you didn't even know that you had, um, well, you, we, of course, we all know deep down, but maybe you're not, not awake at conscious, you know, right now to know, and they're going to essentially come on because you've done that light activation. And like you said, you know, we are all light. We are all energy. You know, we are of all of, you know, the earth and everything. And so that is going to help activate others. So if anyone's, you know, listening or watching right now, and you're in that space where you're like, okay, I'm shifting, or there's definitely something going on with me, but I have no idea what I want my, you know, my purpose to be or what I'm doing. This sounds like the most incredible event for you because you're able to have that guidance be you know directed and activated and then come on and be essentially download from online for yourself right and and activate exactly. that and, and bring those gifts online exactly and i will mention this really quick alice for those who are listening now if they are wondering if they had to do the previous eye body activation the answer is no <laughs> Okay, so there's no like prerequisite. They can just step no. right into this and 2.0 and, and they're good to go. <laughs> yeah, 2.0 and you're good to go. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was feeling that. Yeah, so really like they just have to essentially just show up, be present, be ready to essentially move into this space, into this higher frequency, allow you to, you know, bring them into this space with the, the light and the energy and help them activate what's really already there for themselves. Yes, exactly. And during this process, I will be utilizing various tools that I will explain to them before we begin and tools that they can uh, access, you know, uh, tools that I have that they can, you know, find. And if they want information about it, I readily give that information. Amazing. So not only just the activation, but uh, the different modalities and tools you use in this live, you'll also then essentially be providing for those that are there so they will have those tools to take with them and then continue to essentially practice and use in their own space. 
Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. And that's what I love, you know, when, when you really see, you know, leaders of service step up, you know, not only are they sharing, you know, a gift and being of service, but then they're also leaving you with, you know, tangible tools and, you know, actual things you can walk away with and say, okay, you know, if I'm having an off day or I'm really trying to get to that higher frequency and still teaching myself how to be there, you know, I can tap into these tools and I was shown how to, you know, and I think especially now in this time, it's so important for us to have, you know, our spiritual toolkit and the things we go to and we utilize on a daily to really have it become part of our practice. You know, I've had so many people say to me, oh, you know, there's so much going on in the world and you always seem so positive. And I'm like, well, thank you. I'm not always so positive, but I I like to stay in a heightened state of frequency when I can. And, you know, I'm like, look, here's what it is though. It's really having that toolkit, right? It's having that spiritual toolkit. It's having those practices to know how to tap in, to be able to, even if there is chaos going on, whatever is happening, that you're able to come home to yourself. And it sounds like that's this beautiful thing that you're doing with, you know, this light activation 2.0. It's like, You're allowing yourself to come home to yourself. You're learning the tools, you're being activated, and then you can walk away already knowing that you've been activated and can download those gifts as well as tap into what Hillis is giving you. Exactly. I mean, and I think that's the beauty uh, in the market because any true teacher or leader that's emerging on the planet right now is, you know, there's so many people stepping into the space of remembering who they are. And as they step into the space of remembering who they are, they are on this path of seeking because I was seeking for such a long time and really didn't have that many teachers on the planet. You know, there was, you know, Dr. Michael Beckwith and Neil uh, Donald Walsh and a few others, you know, but they weren't really, they were there when I needed them. But now that we are in stepping into this new energy and frequency, you know, we have to have the, the teachers and leaders that match that frequency. And so now it's time to have these new tools, these new experiences, these new uh, teachers and leaders to really step into the full expression of what's happening now to express the truth of the emergence, the truth of this transformation. Because right now, as we move into this fourth density energy, and, if, and people are just losing their, their you know, lose <laughs> because they don't know what to do. And, and, I, and I talk about it on, on my show uh, quite often, and especially in the last few weeks, is, and, and sorry, my show is Cosmic Insight. Um, but and, and uh, we, we get in that space of really losing our mind because of the space we're moving into, the fourth density. And as we move in that, there's the space of suffering. And we are in the space of choosing to suffer because of the attachment what no longer serves us. You know, because we're so attached to whatever 3D energy that is, whether it's a job, relationship, uh, our belief system, what we are programmed to. And so it served us for so long, but as we move into fourth density, which is the energy of clearing and cleansing and letting go, people don't know what to do because people are also ready to hype up and want to get into fifth uh, density energy, which is the space of unconditional love. However, you can't bring the old stuff into f- f- to 5D, so the, we're in this whole big transitional f- space, and, and that's what it's time now. So people, it's okay if you're losing your minds right now because I know I have. I've been losing my mind. I, I've been getting up at four or five o'clock in the morning not knowing what to do. And I'm like, why? And, and it's okay. It's normal. This is normal. I just want you to, I can't stress this stuff that this is normal, what we're feeling right now. And it's okay if you don't know what to do. It's okay if you're losing your mind. It's okay if you're in a space of panic. It's okay if you just want to quit everything that you knew. It's okay because... We are all in a space of transition, and in transition, things fall apart. Just like an already bag. It's time to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to let it go. No, thank you so much for that, because I, I felt that so heavily, and it, it's so true. Like, so many are losing their minds right now, you know, losing their jobs, losing their sense of self. So much is changing, like you said, and you put it so beautifully, Hillis, when you said it. We are in such a transition time. And in order for there to be change, in order for things to shift, there is going to be some suffering. There is going to be some confusion, some panic, some chaos, 
all of it. And I think it's so beautiful. That's coming from someone like yourself says like, even I'm feeling it, you know, I think that's so important for other people to hear those vulnerabilities and understand, like even spiritual leaders and, you know, thought leaders and coaches and everyone who's already in this space and doing their own work, they're feeling it too, you know, maybe a different type of feeling it because you know what it is. And so it's just kind of like actually moving through it, but you're still experiencing it, you know? And, and I feel like that's so important because so much of the collective is kind of like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it's like, they're just like, what is happening? Like, why is it every day? It seems like the apocalypse is coming in. You know, I've tried to tell people, I'm like, well, that's not happening. I'm like, but there's, <laughs> you know, like, but the thing is, is obviously, as we know, the programming and the fear and all the things that are running around us are all collapsing. And, yeah. and during that collapse, we're seeing so much chaos and so much uncertainty and, and it looks a lot darker than it actually is. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and one of the things I want people to understand Especially now with the stuff that's happening in the Ukraine and the stuff that's happening in New Zealand. And and I talked about this recently on my show as well, is that we are in a clearing and birthing space right now with these new energies. And if you and, and not too many people are aware of this, of the chakra map of the earth, the chakra system of the earth, and the heart chakra. And this is a comparison to the chakras in our bodies as well. So in our bodies, we know what our heart chakra is. And just above that, what's opening is what we call the high heart, which is just between the throat chakra and the heart chakra. So there's a new chakra that has been opened in most of us. It's called the high heart. And so with the energies that are happening in New Zealand, because of the 11th earth chakra that is opening, so that would be considered in us, the earth star chakra below our feet. And then there's the chakra points that are in our hands. So this energy is opening up as well. So this is why all the flooding. And so the flooding represents the space of nurturing and over nurturing. And so just, so just in that space. And if you move around to the earth, to the uh, shelf chakra, which is what we consider the high heart, the high heart is just over the earth chakra. So the earth heart chakra is in the UK. So just, you know, UK and Ireland, and you look right above what's above Russia and Ukraine. So that's the high heart. So this is all this energy that's opening and emerging right now. So it's clearing the old and opening up the new source of simultaneous energy that is happening right now. There's so there are days where you may feel calm and relaxed and peaceful. And other days where you're losing your mind. Or days where you just get up at four o'clock in the morning and no reason. <laughs> no reason. So it, it's just in this energy to where you have to really understand what's happening on the planet. Regardless of what's on the news, regardless of what's on TV, because that's not the full picture. Because one who does deals in energy we have to look at the energy of it. We have to see what the energy is. We have to see past the illusion, past the manipulation, past whatever is being broadcast to us, and seek deeper and ask deeper questions. As we do this, we then can see the trail of energy. And the energy speaks louder than anything, though it's an unseen energy, but it's felt all over. And when you ask yourself, now I want everyone to ask, everyone who's listening, I want you to ask, what is it that I'm feeling? And when you ask what it is that I'm feeling, you allow yourself to be open to receive the answer, whether if it's your energy, planetary energy, or collective energy. And just keep asking the questions until you get the answer that, that resonates within you. Because if you ask the question, what is it that I'm feeling? You say, anxiety. Okay, why am I feeling this anxiety? Why am I feeling panic right now? Because I don't know what to do. I don't know what direction to go in. So just keep allowing yourself to be open, to ask what needs to be asked, so you can be at peace and center with yourself. Wow, that was <laughs> mic drop. 
Um, thank you so much for sharing that because I agree with you. I think it's so important, especially, I mean, I turned off the news almost two, two and a half years ago now, but for those that are still, <laughs> um, for those that are still, you know, watching, tuning in, um, you know, playing into the narratives, if you will, um, of what they're trying to play out and say, it's beautiful what Hill has said, because what I love is, is that, you know, there's so many other people talking on other shows and other spaces about like, let's break this down of, you know, of, of sides of this of that. And you're like, no, 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 no. We're going to go past all of that. We're going to talk about the actual energy because everything is energy. And we're going to talk about on a much bigger scale, what this means and what is happening and what is transpiring. And what a beautiful way you just explain that. Because when you listen to that and you hear that, it really takes away the fear you know, and it really takes yeah. away the depth of the darkness and all the things that are trying to be portrayed on the mainstream and, and all the narratives right now. It's like, no, 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 we look at this as energy and what you just said of like this process of essentially, you know, this clearing out and then this actual rebirth happening. It's like, oh, okay, well, especially me, you know, as a, as a mother, you know, you know, two times, it's like, I can totally understand, you know, to me, it's almost like, I'm like, okay, it's like the earth has been in this like pregnancy mode and now we're about to like give birth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and what I want to express is that regardless of what side you're on, what side you're rooting for, you know, if you're rooting for this side or that side, that doesn't matter. Reason why is because you're still perpetuating the energy of fear. You're still perpetuating the energy of control. You're still perpetuating the law of our bloody energies that have been holding us in this pattern. When you allow yourself to ascend beyond picking sides and step into the space of being the neutral observer, which is a more powerful position to be in because you then can see every movement and every intention and don't get me wrong people who choose a side they have their best and highest intention however the best and highest intention is for uh, self-service or self-recognition because yeah i want you know i want you know russia to be blown up and to be you know fall off earth and, and to be done with no 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 i want ukraine to just drop off into the ocean i'm like people come on what what what, do, what, what are we doing here i mean this and, and you have to understand that through all of this the earth has been in this solar system, this grand celestial body that holds us, that caters to us, that loves us unconditionally, has been here for billions of years. And even before we were uh, put here in our state of infancy, because we're still infants, mind you, she has endured a billion years of trauma in her creation. So just imagine how much energy that she holds and now is allowing to release, to let go in herself. And so sometimes when we are in that space of, oh, what is this? This could be the earth, you know, releasing, letting go of what she's been holding on to for billions of years. So you have to understand that this is not just about us. It's about her it's about us in relation to her, and it's about the collective in relation to in relation to the rest of the universe. Because what's happening here is going to benefit the rest of the universe. I mean, granted, I'm like a super star seed. I'm like over two million something something years old. I'm probably the oldest soul you'll ever meet. But I mean, come on, it's not about you, people. It's about a much bigger picture. Yeah. Wow. I love that. And, and you, you're so right. It's like when you come from that space of the perpetuating the divide and the choosing and all that, it's just, you're just tapping back into those lower energies of the self-service, the programming, all the things that we're all trying to transmute and shift and get rid of, you know? And so yeah. you said that so beautifully and yeah, I mean, what you were explaining, it's like, yeah, it's this beautiful rebirth. It's essentially like we're in the birthing pains right now before it is rebirth, you know? It's like that <laughs> that time beforehand, like that, that, that long period that, that I remember of like labor before you actually go into the actual birthing. <laughs> 
Yeah, is there like a such a thing as a collective Lamaze class? <laughs> That's actually a really good idea. We might have to do something like that. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's like, we're gonna move this energy. <laughs> You know, I would love to do that, honestly. I mean, because I, I see people on the planet organizing and coordinating all these groups and meetups and these meditations. I mean, if the entire earth of seven billion souls can do that at one time, wow. can you imagine That's how it. much energy? Yeah, that would be amazing. I know. Then we can move through such fast and end all this separation and all this divide and all this other craziness. So I'm game if you all are game. <laughs> yes, right? I love it. Amen. I feel the same way. I'm like, how do we come together quicker? How do we shift things? How do we collapse the rest of these systems? This, you know, these powers that be that are keeping things the way they are. I mean, all of it, you know, and I think just more and more of these conversations, these types of, you know, openness into the vulnerability. Also, you explaining so much of on a such a bigger scale of energy that anyone listening or watching can understand, you know, that everything is energy, you know, and, and when you actually see it that way and what you were explaining with, you know, the actual chakra, you know, map of, you know, the world and all of these things, it's like, oh, it actually makes so much more sense when you can tap into that and allow your mind to expand and allow your consciousness to go there instead of just staying in this kind of you know box of like oh this is what i've been told yeah exactly and and just to to put it on a smaller scale for for everyone who's listening i mean the one of the things that helped me in my practice when i started you know over 10 years ago was to see the life in everything okay and, and this is how i broke it down is that when i was in my gratitude practice i still do but in a different way now but I will focus on the inanimate objects. I will say, I'm happy and thankful for the pipes of the water to me. I'm happy and grateful for the stair that I'm sitting on. I'm happy and grateful for this shower curtain. I'm happy and grateful for this bed that I'm laying on. Because you have to understand that they all were once living things. You have to understand that everything that started out as what we consider is an inanimate object. And everything bees life. And, you know, I've done many, 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 many plant medicine ceremonies. And when you allow yourself to step into that space, you actually get to see the life in things that we assume. And we are so quick to assume that there's no life in it. And so when you look at it from that such a small scale and then, then grow out to the larger scale of understanding the earth, You then can see the overlap. You then can see the, the entanglement. You then can see the true oneness that exists. Wow. Yeah, that's so true. And, and what a great, simple practice of how you can tap in within gratitude, but really being so conscious when you're speaking to your gratitude of those types of objects of what you explained. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. And I hope your listeners are beginning to start a new practice. Yeah. It really helped, helped me to center, really understand the world around me. And, you know, sometimes even when you don't have anything or have the thought or illusion that you have nothing, there's so much to have appreciation. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. It's like, Gratitude and appreciation are everything. That was one of the first things that shifted my life was same, you know, very similar to you was being in that space of gratitude, being appreciative and just seeing how different you view the world, even if your world hasn't changed, you know, yeah. it just all of a sudden you just start to feel so much better and you just feel so much more in your heart space. And all of a sudden it's like, even though there is darkness around you and things are going on somehow you're like oh there's still inner peace here. My heart is still happy. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like at first it's almost like this mind fuck of like, How is that possible? That was me. And then like, when I started realizing like, oh, this is from my practices, it was like, oh, well then continue on, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, and, and, and to really bring it home for everyone is to really understand and how this practice can color your world, so to speak. It's, it's having a new relationship. So you have a new bow and, and, you, and, and you've done all these things before, but you're doing it with someone else and you see it differently. So this is what the energy of appreciation does. It really colors your world 
because it creates a new relationship. So you see, you know, the home that you live in differently. You see the car that you drive in differently. You see your friends differently. And heck, some of your friends may even disappear because they don't resonate in your field anymore. And guess what? That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I, and I thank you for that because I feel like a lot of people are going through that. And that's a very, you know, um, something I think most people didn't expect to go through, you know, in this lifetime. And so, you know, you saying that, uh, you know, that's okay and things not resonating and allowing things to shift and really honoring yourself in that gratitude and, and allowing you to have a different lens and to see things. If certain people don't resonate with it or certain things fall off, that's all okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's part of this transformation. I mean, heck, I can tell you, you know, friends come and go. I mean, and for whatever reason, it's meant to be. I mean, not everyone is going to be in your life forever. You know, I've had friendships that lasted or that has lasted over 20 years, and they're still my best friends to this day. I've had other friendships that lasted me six months, other friendships that lasted me like five years. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, everyone has this idea of the ideal relationship, ideal friendship. But the most important relationship is the relationship you have with yourself. And if you don't have a good relationship with yourself, if you don't honor yourself, if you don't allow yourself to see the bigger picture or to have patience with yourself as you are going through this transformation, then it's going to be a difficult time. I'm sorry, but I mean, that's just the truth. I mean, you can live in pain and suffering and trauma and drama all you want. And you be in there kicking and screaming by yourself inside this little tiny box, wondering how the hell are you going to get out of it? And guess what? It's all up to you. I mean, like I said, I'm just a facilitator of this work. If, if no one is willing to meet me or to, to or do the work, I can't do it for them. And so this is what I want people to know. No matter who you're seeing, no matter what healer, what psychic, whatever, no one is here to do it for you anymore. Now it's time for you to step up and own your shit. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, amen over and over again. It's right. It's so true. Now is the time to step up into you, to own who you are, to do the work, you know, whether you work with someone or not, to still not expect them to do it, that you have to show up for yourself. And I love that you said that the most important relationship, especially now is with yourself. And if you haven't started to dive into yourself, here is your reminder from Ellis. <laughs> dive into yourself, start going there, start doing the work. It is so needed right now. It is so powerful. And you as an individual will be so much happier that you did and will go through your own transformation. Well, hello, this was so powerful and amazing. Thank you so much for being here in this conversation. Everything will, of course, be in the show notes, guys, um, whether you're watching or listening and his live and all the information. And that is with Ascended Masters, as he mentioned. So I'll put all that info in there as well. And you're going to be doing lives um, of this Activation 2.0 more than just uh, the coming Thursday, right? Well, well, I have been given my instructions because it seems like uh, my initial thought was to do them every week. But my now instructions, my blueprint has been like every other week. Oh, okay. And and they're different. And so when I first started started doing these, the first one was uh, trauma healing. So and the second one I did was um, heart healing. And this one this week is light body activation. So every one that I do is different, but it doesn't matter, you know, uh, because if you purchase it, you can go back and rewatch them. You can. Uh, okay, that's what I was going to ask. Them. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah. So for whatever reason, someone misses it and then they're listening and they're like, oh, I still want to tune in. I still want to be a part of it. They can either go back and essentially grab the replay and, and purchase it or they can jump into one of your other ones that you do that's coming in the coming weeks. So either way, yeah. they'll be able to be a part of it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I'm just this vessel following his map, his blueprint to bring and deliver uh, what's being asked for at the time. Yes, I love that. So beautiful. Hillis, you are such a light. So honored to have you and meet you and be here. Everyone that was listening and watching, thank you so much. Please know if you are here, it is not by accident, you are meant to be here and listen and hear and awaken further. I truly hope this episode awakens and activates something in you. And if you felt called by spirit to this incredible light body activation, go check out Hillis and connect with him. Thank you so much, everyone. Love, light, style, and blessings. Bye.